I just want people to know that I'm here to work together with them. Uh, whether it's my colleagues on the council that, or the controller, um, but most importantly, the people of the city of Buffalo know that I'm here to collaborate. You know, we, everyone talks about challenges that are ahead, and we'll address those challenges together, and we'll get through it together. There's, you're always facing challenges as a municipality, and but we'll get there together. Well, there you have it. For the first time in nearly two decades, they're changing the nameplates. The city of Buffalo has a new leader at the top of City Hall, acting mayor Chris Scanlon, bringing a new vision for the city's future. Good evening, everybody. I'm Michael Wooten, joined by our 7 News political analyst Bob McCarthy to st start things off here tonight. We're glad you're here with us. So, Bob, here we are. We knew this day was coming. They've yeah. had plenty of time to prepare for this. And I always like to start these conversations, especially about what's <coughs> happening in Buffalo City Hall. But even if you don't live in the city, even if you don't work in the city, I promise you this impacts you greatly and what happens here. And the city of Buffalo faces a lot of challenges. I'll just start with how much of a change do you think Chris Scanlon is able to bring to that office? office for the next year before he would face uh, actually less than a year because he'll face a primary election come June. Right, but he will be there and throughout all of next year serving yep. and no matter what happens next June. But this is a whole new deal for Chris Scanlon. He can't just sit back and wait for the next council meeting to to cast a vote or anything, Michael. He's got to he's got to lead this government. He's got to run the second biggest city in New York State, and that all of the problems that are attendant with that. So he is really going to have to assert himself, and he's going to have to do it. He's going to have to become a politically strong mayor too in order to do that very soon. Do you think he makes any dramatic changes in terms of changing, you know, commissioners? Or or people with whom he surrounds himself, or does he leave a lot of the old guard from Byron Brown's administration? I, I, I can't tell you exactly what's going on in his mind, but I am sure that especially those on the second floor of City Hall who are closest to him, he'll have he'll have those people in key positions, I would think. You know, if he sees a particular departments that are running well, he'll probably stick with them and, and let them go. This is all in his best interest to be elected mayor uh, next year, too. So he, he wants a smooth running government. It was interesting to hear first from former Mayor Byron Brown. It's strange to now say that. We heard from the former mayor very early this morning um, before we heard from the new acting mayor. And Byron Brown said he does not think the city is in a financial crisis. He has said before it's a potential $25 million budget shortfall. I know you follow this stuff closely. How bad are the finances in the city? Well, the, uh, the former mayor has said he dismisses this idea of a $40 million deficit. And he is very adamant about that. And through all the uh, interviews that I had with him when he was leaving and with the rest of our reporters that's that he has been adamant about that but there's there's a problem <laughs> there there really is and we could we can argue about the uh, quibble about the numbers but it's going to require some type of drastic action on on some level and it's not going to be business as usual and that's going to be a problem for Chris Scanlon because he's going to have to propose a budget in May that may have some unpopular measures in it and then face a primary just weeks later in June. So these are all difficult things that he's facing in the next, in the, over the next six or eight months. Finally, we're all going to get to know Chris Scanlon a little more over the coming months. Um, I know you've covered him for a long time, and he has a—he certainly has a, a political pedigree, I think, in the city of Boston. Most certainly, most certainly, his his dad was uh, the late John Scanutz Scanlon, a very close political aide to Mayor Jim Griffin. Um, a lot of the brains behind Jim Griffin's success. And uh, so it comes from that uh, old First Ward, South Buffalo blood that uh, that he has and, and remember that he was instrumental in uh, helping Mayor Brown win his last term on a write-in basis and he did that by rallying all of the city workers the police officers and firefighters and other city workers who live in South Buffalo and he rallied them and and came together to help uh, Byron Brown be elected mayor and if he is smart. He may very well uh, make his own political organization based in South Buffalo, based in City Hall, same way Byron Brown did. 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when Byron Brown won that general election after losing the primary, it, Chris Scanlon was on stage right beside him, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, right and, and remember that uh, all of this transition was, was timed so that Chris Scanlon could just move right in the way he did this morning. All right. It is truly a historic day at Buffalo yes, City Hall. Uh, important stuff. It's always great to get your insight, Bob.